Hey guys, welcome to the Mariah Report. I'm Martin Burgess. And today we're doing things a little different. Unfortunately, Dan had a dental emergency he had to get taken care of. And so he went and had some teeth extracted and now he's in a lot of pain and he cannot talk. So here to save the day is friend to the show, Andrew Martone. He's here to join us and filling in for Dan. If he won't and she won't and they won't, then I will. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, thanks so much for stepping in at the last minute. But there's too much Mariah news out in the world, so we cannot miss a beat. We had to keep going. The show must go on. And Dan will definitely be back next week, so don't anybody worry. We wish him well and a speedy recovery. In the meantime, Andrew, the last time you were on the Mariah Report, we called you in because we had lost the legendary Aretha Franklin. So you came in to fill us in and we talked all kinds of Aretha. So how have you been doing? How has the quarantine been for you? It's so crazy. We were just talking about this before the show, and that was two years ago. And I cannot believe that it's been two years since we've done this. I mean, I know, you know, we're we're doing we're recording this episode via Zoom. So we're doing it a little differently than we used to do it. But, you know, we'll uh, we make it work. Quarantine has been you know what? I'm I'm very grateful. It has been definitely a lot kinder to me than it could have been and that it's been to a lot of other people. So, you know, I'm, as the Clark sisters would say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. It's forced us to adapt. So now we can do these Mm -hmm. over the Zoom episodes. Yeah. So, which is cool. Yeah. So hopefully we have some more interactions with you in the future. So, Lita, I want to talk about Aretha a little bit. I was thinking about Mariah releasing all this MC30 material mm-hmm. and all these club mixes does aretha have anything similar with she has a, cat- a catalog of club mixes so she doesn't have obviously the you know what mariah has in terms of a repository of stuff a lot of there's a lot of stuff from the 80s mm-hmm. and most i think all of that stuff is now available on spotify mm. back in the mid 2010s they reissued two different labels reissued all of those albums from the 80s and did expanded versions with most of the mixes that were issued with them. There's some, there's actually a really cool, the Whitney duet, there's a really cool mix of it. It's not really one of the club mixes or dance mixes, but there's like a raw mix of it where it's just like, just like a straight run through of the song with no editing and no chopped up. And like Whitney like throws an Aunt Rhea in there that doesn't make the final cut. Mm. And there's Prince did um, some mixes that mm-hmm. it's like the only crossover they've had so there's that and then through the 90s and into the 2000s that stuff's not really available anywhere um there's i mean she did with morales um the record that jd and trey wrote she went back into the studio like mariah does Mm. and re-recorded here we go again as like a complete dance mix and she did that with the lauren song rose is still a rose too there's some dance mixes but those aren't they're sitting over there on my shelf but Mm -hmm. they're not there very few like mariah but one or two all right. I'm trying to think about my playlist, how I'm going to build my tra- <laughs> my dance tracks. Okay, so, yeah. so we have a lot, of t- lot to talk about this week. So Mariah released Save the Day. We're going to catch up on some of the MC30 stuff from the past. We've got some updates. She's releasing more. It's Butterfly Week officially this mm-hmm. week. Uh, and she also had a really interesting Zoom call and gave us some really good tidbits as well. So let's talk about the big one. Save the Day came out. Yes. What are your thoughts on that single? So I, I was so hesitant at first when I heard, when I heard the premiere from D nice and I just, the way that it was just playing back through my headphones, I just wasn't actually, you know what? It was literally, I think I put a meme up too. It was like me today listening to save the day and this hook's not really that wild. And then me three days later listening to save the day and going like full Mariah hand waving in the air. Like if he won't, then she won't, then we won't like just complete. And I messed the lyric up. I know that don't come for me, but (laughs) you know, like it just, the hook really grew on me. Yes. Same. When I first heard it, it was the same thing. I wasn't loving it, but I told myself when this always happens, you don't love it. And then three days later, you're obsessed playing it all day long. And I love, I think the bridge is just so immaculate. Yeah. That's just, like, so, I mean, listen, you're going to incorporate the song. I think that that was such a, a great way to take that incorporation and that sample a step further. Mm. I do, somebody's going to come for me, but I don't care. Please do. Mm. I I do wish it's a, it's that a safe place. Somebody... It's, a safe, it's a safe place here. You can say <laughs> it's a safe place between you and I. It's not <laughs> you that I'm worried about. It's the rest of the world that scares me. <laughs> but I... I do kind of wish that maybe someone else had produced the record. Uh Uh-huh. Like, I just, I think, you know who I, so 
there's this production duo, um, Pop and Oak. Mm. And I love, they've done, um, they did like Chasing Time by Azalea Banks. They Mm. did, there's that Mary J. Blige song, Only Love, which also samples Dr. Love, like the Make It Happen extended version does. Mm -hmm. And I just think that they do a really, really impeccable job of working a sample into a record. Mm -hmm. And I would have loved to hear like what those ears could have applied to this concept. Right. So that, you know, like, yeah, I already know what this is, Jermaine. Like, I did. Mm-hmm. I just didn't... It didn't have to be you. I know. I know. That is that is annoying. Like, when Jermaine's saying, you know, putting his tag in there, it was cute the first 3,000 3, times on older songs, and we still get to hear it whenever we play those older songs. So I felt like it was I a just, little unnecessary. I love, I love that we get a couple of records here and there that his tag's not in there, and then I'm like, right, Jermaine did this. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, you don't know what to do, where I don't think... It's not in there, I believe, right? No, no, not at all. Like, and there's there's a couple others, too, where the tag's not... I mean, I know, like, like Always Be My Baby, it's obviously not in there. We Belong or, Together. Um, right, or We Belong Together, mm-hmm. or um, Long Ago, mm-hmm. but, you know... I know, it's like, a little annoying. Well, apparently, on Sp- so on Spotify, the, his tag is in there, and then I was told, and I heard it, that on Apple, Apple Music... There's no Jermaine in it. Wait. Yes, and I heard it with my ears. Someone played it for me. Wait, really? But I went and bought the Apple Music version for a dollar twenty nine, and he's in there. I he's got, in there. I got yeah, because I bought because I bought it, and I was like, you know, and so not even like that, but I I bought it, and mm. unsurprisingly, there he was. But that's so interesting. Well, now I'm just, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the streaming version of it is different than the one for purchase. But what? Okay, lambs. Yes. Somebody needs to hook us up. We we need the Jermaine Free version. Well, who's got what? Who's got the Jermaine Free? <laughs> who's got the Jermaine version? Because I wanted the Jermaine Free version. Just... Well, so, okay. So we know that if you purchase it through Apple, you get Jermaine. Spotify yes. has Jermaine. Jermaine. <laughs> Apple Music does not. So one of you lovely lambs with Apple Music, feel yeah. free to hook us up. <laughs> or we'd also love to know, like, who has title? Is Jermaine on the title version? Or right. I guess Amazon Music as well. There's that too. That too. So many options. Yeah. Anyway, so well, the song is good. The song is catchy. It's 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 definitely it has its st- you know I'm I'm walking around the house if he won't mm-hmm. and she, I'm not gonna sing. I <laughs> I'm like looking at you, but I feel so bad. <laughs> By the way, Andrew has a but... professional microphone situation happening over the Zoom. He looks like Mariah in her studio right now. I, it, it's it's kind of, you know what I I took a couple of screenshots and we'll share one <laughs> because it I keep like I I keep leaning into it. I'm like oh god I'm, it's happening it's just happening and I've got a Mariah shirt on just like she would like yeah Good Morning America is ready for your home summer concert you the whole, series. My roots are coming <laughs> in just like hers were at the beginning. Like I'm giving you the whole look. Yeah. <laughs> so in the New York Times this week they reviewed Save the Day. And they gave they gave it a great review. It's a good song and deserves yeah. it. They, however, the journalist said that it sounds like mid nineties Mariah. Did you get that vibe at all? Because when you say mid nineties Mariah, I'm thinking fantasy, butterfly, music box, that era where we're kind of getting I big vocals and big ballads. I was getting I, totally totally getting like 2010, 12 Mariah. You know what I this. keep thinking about when I listen to it? It keeps bringing me back to bring it on home. For some reason. Yes, yes, yes. Like, and I think that's partly vocally, and I think it's maybe stylistic. I mean, they're such different records, but it keeps, for some reason, I keep thinking about Bring It On Home. Bring It On Home. Which wasn't that, was that 2012? Around then, yeah. That Because that was was when the re-election was happening with Obama. Bring It On Home. Yeah, I get like, Bring It On Home 100% a little bit. Okay. And then I get Mm -hmm. a sprinkling of My Saving Grace from Charm Bracelet. Just a little bit in the beginning. Interesting. Yeah, there's a, there's a little charm okay. of vocal in there. But but vo- but but I don't hear. But so vocally, it just so I'm not crazy about that. Before the the sample drops and everything, I'm not crazy about those vocals at the beginning. And mm. I don't mean that I have I have an issue with the production of them. I think that that doubling just kind of pushes it in a direction that doesn't accentuate the right parts of the voice. I feel like it it, it highlights areas of her voice that aren't at their best right now mm. respectfully mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a, that's sort of the area where i think it sounds a little bit like my saving grace in a in a weird kind of way okay i mean the i be- mean you know what though she got a lot of song? flack for her voice back then so that right yeah yeah remember but she popped off on my saving grace she did i know that's not in a bad way like it just reminds me no. of those days 
Okay. You but, know what? Let me, okay. So let, I was just thinking about somebody was tweet, somebody I follow was tweeting about charm bracelet this week and was, and then I, they were, they like posted, I only want her. And I was like, you better put my saving grace on next. So mm. let me, cause I love that record. So, so much. Just so. think about it next time you listen to save the day. Okay. You know what? I'll, I'll like cue them up next to each other after we're done and and I'll share my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, a sprinkling. It's not a, it's not yeah, a big... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about Lauren Hill's part. Because okay. I was listening to it really close, and I feel like it's redone. It's resung for no. this song. No, it's not. You're getting original vocals from Killing that's Mustafa. A, that's original vocals, absolutely. And you you can tell that it's original vocals because it just... I mean, that that's a, that's a part that we... That's like ingrained. Yes, I know. That's absolutely ingrained in us. We all know that Lauren record so well. That's and also Lauren hasn't said boo about it either. Yeah, so know, right. It's clear that this was not a collaboration. This was a utilization of a sample and out of nothing but, you know, respect and admiration, they gave Lauren the the full credit on the same way that like Jay Z and Kanye gave Otis Redding credit on Otis. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's happened numerous other times. But this isn't, you know, Lauren would be talking about this if this was a collaboration. Right, of course. Lauren's been doing stuff. I just saw a video of her doing a little mini concert for Louis Vuitton. There's a new campaign oh, yeah. mm-hmm. featuring her. Yeah, for their new collection. I yeah, think. she's still out and about mm-hmm. working it. Yeah, she's she's still doing her thing. She's not usually there on time, but she's still sh- she still shows up. Listen. Yeah. Well, listen, she, in, yeah, in conclusion, I think the song is really good. It's really strong. Yeah. I think the Lauren Hill samples was a great choice. Absolutely. I feel like they could have turned her down a little bit just so we can hear See, Mariah you know a bit what? more. I, so I don't disagree with that during the, you know, during the verses and the hook and everything, but Mm. at first I was super hype about listening to it and like, oh my God, Lauren and Mariah, you know, mashing together on the bridge. And now as I listen to it more, I'm like, is Lauren even on this bridge? Mm. Mm -hmm. I keep listening and I'm just like, do I, 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 I'm struggling to hear if I even hear her on that bridge. Right. At this point, I'm not sure if they, if they kept her in for that part, you know, you hear the little like. Um, there's like one little part that you hear her that Mariah's not doing, but I wonder if they kept that vocal in for the bridge or if it's just Mariah layered a bunch of times and stacked. Right, right. Yeah. To keep listening. Listen, still a lot of studying to be done. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, it's a six day old record. Yeah. You know, there's still so much to, you know, we have days, weeks, months, years, decades to live with this record and to experience it and to truly appreciate it the way that we're going to or not. However, it ends up falling in our, own respective opinions of her and her catalog exactly so mariah was posting some pictures on her instagram she has a really good full wig she's wearing another silk robe but people zoomed in and there was a little mesh situation in the cleavage do you think we're gonna gonna get a video for this save the day i am not gonna hold my breath yeah right. i'm not just because i i just don't know that we're gonna get that I, and I don't, and I, I don't mean that pessimistically. I just, based on the like trajectory of things, I just don't know that that's, I would love a video. It would be even cooler if, I don't think Lauren's going to get in on it, but it would be so cool mm. if like Lauren got in on it and if yeah. they could do a little thing together. But I just don't know that that's the direction. You know, I think that this, this project is so much more about unearthing the, and I know that this was finished this year, but unearthing these old records that have been sitting in the vault for however long or have been relegated to interchangeable single or international edition for the last two decades and you know shining light on them and giving you know and showing the world some of the things that haven't made the album or that you know never got completely finished or whatever so i don't think that she wants to shine any more light than that on them because then i think also I think that then like if you do a video, I think that then there creates more of an expectation of a level of success. And then if there's not that level of success, then you start to endure Mm -hmm. criticism that maybe you don't need to endure. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the single does whatever. I guess charts come out tomorrow, right? Soon, yeah. So, you know, if the single doesn't perform and it's just like, well, we're releasing a collection. We're not pushing, you know, yeah, it's a new album of material that's largely new, but there's no concern about like, oh, it underperformed or oh, da, 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 da. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you think? I'll be down for like a little something for, a, you know, nothing too complicated. Actually watching the Lauren Hill video that she did for Louis Vuitton, it's a 20 minute kind of indoor concert. Mm-hmm. No audience or anything. It's just her and the band or socially distanced. They actually did a really good job of just filming it and making it look dynamic and interesting. Mm. So I'll be down and it's in black and white. So I was thinking, okay, we could do a save the day indoor video somehow. <laughs> it could work out. I'd be down for a performance. 
Yeah, that too. That'd be good. I love a performance. I think that would be really, especially as we progress further and further. And now we have more. I mean, even like you look at the way that the Good Morning America performance was like a little bit more heightened level of production on that, Mm -hmm. you know, kick it up a couple more notches. We have we have the technology now and we have the ability to produce something like that. Yeah. Even some sort of like outdoor scenic something on a stage, just film it, make it look nice. You know, there's Mm -hmm. all things, all kinds of things you can do these days. Yeah, exactly. All right. This uh, speaking of some of older stuff and bringing it back up, underneath the stars made a little debut cameo back on the R and B charts on Billboard. Wait, did it? See, I didn't it, even see this. She's up there. She's probably like in the. <laughs> she's on the chart. She's, she's you know what? mention on the charts. On the chart. Yeah, right. It's pretty impressive. All these years later. I just so my whole thing is just so you're teasing me with these things. Yeah. Are you going to give me these things? Like I would like that video. I would like that all in your mind demo. Where are my things, ma'am? Okay, so speaking of the Underneath the Stars video, <laughs> I saw on Twitter somebody had joked that they would they were going to take the day off from work when the video comes out, and then Mariah commented on that pe- that person's tweet saying, "Yeah, I want to see it too." But I'm like, "Wait, huh? you don't have the video? Where's the video?" So, uh, I thought you had the video. So with the what now? And yeah, oh, God. so now I'm see, confused. Just, uh, listen, I am suffering from a lot of confusion. Like I just. Like, why, why are you teasing me with these things? Yeah, Don't right. like, I am very easily excited by things like this, especially like all in your mind is probably my favorite record from the debut. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to give me that level of vocals mm. 30 seconds. And that's going to be the, like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need the full, re- like, I'm sorry. I actually need the whole demo. Like you're just going to have to hand the whole demo over all nine tracks or whatever's on there. I, I'm going to need all those demo versions. Yeah. I know you've got someday. I know you've got vision of love. I think hypnotize is going to be on the rarities, but I'm going to actually need them all. Like, thank you so much. Just, just, if you could just send that my way, I can send you my address Hoboken, New Jersey. It's yeah. right across the river. You can probably see where I live from the roof. Yeah. But... It'll be easier if Mariah just opened the apartment so we can come in and just go through the stuff and pick out what we want. That would, you know what, actually, <laughs> that would be fantastic. So speaking of MC30, what mm-hmm. have, what's been your favorite moments so far? Apart from what you just mentioned, what are, do you, are you loving the club mixes I... coming out? Like I just highlight? have so much gratitude for the fact that all of this music is so readily accessible to people now as I, I constantly discuss some of these things and I discuss how inaccessible they tend to be. And as a, as a music collector, I've done a decent job of acquiring a good quantity of this stuff. Mm. I don't have it all by any means. I actually just got my, I've had make it happen vinyls for a while. I just got the CD single like a week after it dropped, but the fact that I can finally talk about how much I love the Make It Happen extended version and then just drop a link to it on Spotify in an iMessage to a friend. Mm. So all, you know, these things becoming accessible is just so exciting to me. And uh, you know what? I think it might be so far. It might be the always be my baby club mix because Uh that was something that was elusive to me for a long time as well. And it took me a while to get my hands on and having that and having the fact that we're getting the radio edits too, which I think is so, you know, listen, I'll listen to it. Mariah has equipped me to be able to sit through a 10 minute dance mix gleefully and make it feel like it's three, but Mm -hmm. sometimes depending on like what playlist I'm on and when I'm working out sometimes, whatever, you know, I like to just listen to the radio edits. So Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? What are some of your favorites? Definitely. I'm loving the Dream Lover, the stuff that came out, because that's one of the original club remixes that really stood out to me in her catalog. That's the, that's that, the, that caught the my first attention. full club mix. Yeah. Um, Monumental. Loving that. Loving the Always Be My Baby. Just happy to have access to it. And just there was different versions that mm-hmm. I had never heard before. And we're going to actually, this is the perfect segue, because last week we mentioned that one of my favorites was the ST mix. Dan said it was called the Saint Mix. I thought it was the ST Mix. <laughs> we didn't know what the hell ST stood for. However, on Apple Podcasts, you can leave reviews for the, the Mariah Report and they help the show grow. So one of our listeners, Music Lover NYC, wrote to us and said this. Martin and Dan are the best lamb friends you've always wanted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They really know her. <laughs> now, that, now here's the, the good bit. Who can tell them that the ST dub is because Satoshi Tomei programmed it? Although now I will also call it the Saint Dub Mix. Regardless, it's a fantastic listen. This is the podcast. So I did a Google because I had to, had to look up who this person is. Because we don't know her. We don't know her, but now we're going to know her because <laughs> there's some interesting facts and there's a, there's a little thread that we all need to know about. 
Uh-huh. So ST stands for Satoshi Tomei. Satoshi is a DJ from Japan who was born in Tokyo. He works with David Morales and Frankie Knuckles, legendary Frankie right. Knuckles. So, Legends. Yeah. So these are these are club icons, really, like huge yeah. icons in the DJ um, yeah. world. Absolutely. So listen to this. So in the early 90s, Satoshi toured and played keyboard for Japanese com- composer Ryuchi Sakamoto of Yellow Magic Orchestra fame. Uh-huh. Now, who is Yellow Magic uh-huh. Orchestra? They have if, the firecracker. If you know, you, and this is, I know some of you don't know this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know this one? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so Yellow Magic Orchestra, they have the song Firecracker, which is the, um, the infamous elusive, firecracker. infamous, yes, that was supposed to be used for Loverboy, Lover however Boy. it was stolen by someone. I I don't know who that is. We right. love everybody, but I just I, I don't know her. I still don't know her. Well, the funny thing is, so in the Dream Lover EP, you know, yes. part of MC30, one of the vinyl mixes, the Bam Soul Joint, people mm-hmm. speculate that there is the Firecracker mix, though the Firecracker sample is in there. And yeah, it I sounds mean, it like sounds Firecracker, like it. but now it makes it sense. Like Mariah's hanging out with these DJs in the, in the club. Yeah, it makes sense that someone will throw something similar sounding or or the actual right. sample. Someone's gonna pull an obscure record and throw it. I mean that that you can just hum that and people people know where what to associate with that with in 2020. I, I don't know her who I believe sings that record with the <laughs> firecracker sample that we the most know, but you know that I mean before that record came before I'm real came out that was such an obscure you know, Mariah was the first person yeah. to license that sample so right that was such an obscure random thing that nobody would have known that so yeah it is so cool to think about that like that vinyl just getting like blocked out and just like oh this is cute let's mix that in yeah but also now that we see that it wasn't a random thought in 2001 to use that she's been hanging out with these DJs since mm-hmm. Dream Lover like since those days early 90s So that's been in her mind the whole time. And did you, I know that we didn't talk about talking about this, but did you see the like alleged like credits and stuff for the rarities? All right. A lot of of speculation. We're going to take a break real soon. (laughs) You know what? Listen, do you want it? We can take the break now because this is going to be a whole nother tangent. So. All right. Put a pin in that. Let's take a break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the rarities, um, the new updated speculation playlist. We're going to talk about the Butterfly MC30 stuff that's coming out because there are some really interesting things in there. We're also going to talk about the Zoom call Mariah did. She gave us some good tidbits as to what to expect. And we're going to talk about the memoir a little more. We'll be right back.